Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours. This is your Monday Minutes. Um, we are back with another installment of the EMS Quick Study resource here. This is episode four, and actually the introduction for the anatomy and physiology. So this is anatomy and physiology part one of this uh, sub-series, I guess you would call, of the EMS Quick Study. So why is this stuff important to you? You might say to yourself, well, when I'm on my calls every day and I'm running calls with patients, do I always need to know, you know, what physiology is going on? Do I need to be worried about uh, respiratory systems or reproductive systems or what's going on in the abdominal cavity, things like that? Yes, you do. Of course, when you're assessing your patient and you're thinking about what's going on with your patient, you need to have a good understanding of this content, right? The purposes, of course, of these Monday Minutes is that this is more geared towards your exam preparation and hopefully will lead you to better patient assessments and better clinical decisions when you can hit these key points and keep this sort of in the front of your mind, these key points of these bigger topics when you're assessing your patients, right? So when we're looking at our exams and we're thinking about answering questions, these are the things that you want to start thinking about, okay, and the things you want to try to recall, all right? But again, a lot of this information, too, is very important and very good when you are assessing your patients and trying to come up with a clinical picture of what's going on. So when we talk about anatomy, of course, that's a study of a structure of an organism and its parts, and the organism in this case, of course, is the human body. And physiology, again, the human body, and this is when we're studying what the normal functions are of the human body. Pathophysiology, and when we talk about the disease mechanisms, okay, going on inside of the body. And homeostasis, this is that normal state of balance, right, guys? When everything's working working well together, everything is, you know, syncing together, right? But, of course, for us in the field, when we talk about patients and trauma and medical emergencies, that in, an injury or an illness will interfere with this homeostasis. So, again, these are key elements because this is the type of stuff you're going to see. You take a test, it might say, what is homeostasis, right? And this will be pretty much will be within the answer. And this is what we're trying to do here with these, this, these Monday Minutes. All right. So the building blocks. Well, the, the body has building blocks, starting out with chemical, organelle, moves on to your cell, moves on to the organ itself, the organ system, and then the entire organism, okay? Now, these are the building blocks. Again, guys, keep in mind, this is the type of stuff you might see on a test, right? When they ask you uh, what, a, what the, some of the building blocks of the human body, this is the type of stuff you're going to look out for, okay? But again, also important to know, this is the type of thing that help you build upon your patient assessment and your clinical picture and your clinical decision making. All right, so what are some of the organ systems? Well, we've got our skeletal, we have respiratory, urinary, reproductive, the uh, integumentary. I always have a problem saying that one, okay? Otherwise known as your skin, okay? Your circulatory system, gastrointestinal system, endocrine, muscular, nervous, immune, and of course, things like special sensory type systems, okay? Now, the body cavities house some of these systems, right? Your cranial and your spinal canal, they house that the nervous system, house a special sensory system. Now, your thoracic cavity is going to hold your respiratory system or your cardiovascular system. Other body cavities are your, are your mediastinum, right? This is your heart, your trachea, your main stem bronchi, your esophagus, and large blood vessels. And your abdominal cavity holds your gastrointestinal system and, of course, part of your urinary system. And you get your retroperitoneal space, and this is your kidneys and major blood vessels as well. And then your pelvic cavity, also holding some of your gastrointestinal system, your urinary, and, of course, your reproductive systems. So that's it for this section. Real quick, because anatomy and physiology, guys, really goes on to a lot of different subsystems and subcategories, right? Next time, we're going to talk about uh, the cellular tr cells and cellular transport, and it's going to get a little deeper. And some of these, again, are going to be longer than others. So we're going to go each one, break them down so that you can understand them and you can have these takeaways. 
Okay. Again, guys, you know what? You're looking at something like this here. You're about it. It doesn't tell you much, right, about the kidneys or the major blood vessels and a lot of other things that are going on in your retroperitoneal space, right? But on an exam, all right, you might they might ask you kidneys are part of what area of the body or retroperitoneal space includes what? And by thinking about the wall, okay, I remember that they include the kidneys and the major blood vessels, and you look for that in your answers, okay? And on top of that, you're doing your patient assessment, right? And let's say you've got a patient who, you know, is, is complaining of, of pain in a certain area. You can document it better by saying the and patient may have retroperitoneal, retroperitoneal um, issues going on, right? Or maybe you're looking at a patient that's got a problem with the mediastinum, right? So you're going to say, um, you know, again, these are the things you're going to see on an exam, asking you what what's inside that, that area of the body, okay? What what body cavity includes the heart, the trachea, the main stem bronchi, the esophagus? What body cavity includes that? What What cavity includes the gastrointestinal and urinary systems? Stuff that is good to know, right, when you're taking it to these key elements, but again, also very important to know and good takeaways when you are doing your patient assessment and coming up with a clinical picture of what's going on with your patient. So I hope you can use these Monday Minutes, guys. Again, these set special little subsection of Monday Minutes, these EMS study guide uh, episodes here are really geared to help you focus on key elements when you're taking your exams, uh, you know whether, whether it's a state exam, a national exam, okay, great little uh, content and ways to kind of just sort of refresh on these topics, okay? And again, some of these will be longer than others. Next week, we're going to be doing, again, cellular transport. That might be a little bit longer than this quick one today, okay? So that's it for me, guys. I have any comments, concerns, send them over to me, all right? But uh, I also encourage you as well, Check out the CMS Quick Study Guide. This is the, the actual meat and potatoes of what we're talking about here in these episodes um, and breaks down all the different things you're going to see on a test. So, you know, really great to review before an exam, whether it's a state or a national exam. Go check it out. Click hit, click the button here uh, where it says click here for details and get some more information on that. Uh, in the meantime, of course, any questions, comments, concerns, send them to me. It's contact at emsofficehours.com. Until next week, as always, Jim Hoffman and the Monday Minutes, stay safe.